Good morning. Today is Monday, July 15th, 2024. I've quoted to you before from a remarkable novel, Us Against You, written by Frederick Backman. It's a fantastic novel. It's part of a trilogy. You owe it to yourself to read the whole thing. But there's a line here which is so wise, so true. He writes, It's so easy to get people to hate one another. That's what makes love so impossible to understand. Hate is so simple that it always ought to win. It's an uneven fight. We've discussed many times that a tragedy, in addition to causing great pain, can also bring about good. The attempted assassination of Donald Trump on Saturday evening was certainly traumatic for him, his family, his followers, and for the country. I deeply hope that there will be good that comes from it. And if so, here is a quote that, in my opinion, lays out what that good could be. Representative Dan Muser, Republican of Pennsylvania. He said in an interview that he condemns political hate speech and the rising partisanship of the last few years This is the important part. He says he has been in touch with Democratic colleagues in the House since the shooting and is having discussions on how to have positive dialogue across the aisle. And here's his quote. There is plenty of blame to go around. And we all need to understand that we have a responsibility here, that we have a responsibility here to improve the political environment. Can you hear that song? May it be God's will. I want to share with you this morning a letter written by Rav Yosef Rimon in response to a question that he received, which in his usual manner, where he takes on a complicated subject and presents it clearly and easy to understand, but at the same time, very, very precise. And then I also have a bit of a surprise at the end. So the letter starts off, you asked about Triat HaMesim, the Jewish belief in the resurrection of the dead, that at some time in the future, some people who have lived their lives, and died, will come back to physical life. And I'll try to write a little bit about what this means. So the first thing is that we believe with a sincere belief that there will be such a thing as Tchiyata Mesim. For example, this is written in Sefer Daniel, one of the works of the prophets, the prophet Daniel. Many of those who have died and are buried in the ground will get up, will have new life. Similarly, is it written in the Yud Gimel Ikrim Shel Rambam, one of the one of the thirteen principles of belief, according to the Rambam, and this is a a popular version of it, I believe with a full belief, with a complete belief, <clears throat> that there will be something called where God will cause those who have died to come back to physical life. At the time of God's choosing. Okay, so... It's, we believe it. It's true. It will happen. 
when will it happen? So he writes, there are three components to our eschatology, those beliefs that we have in what happens in the future messianic era. Hopefully it's not so far in the future. Three things. Mashiach, the coming of Messiah, that will be a person who will come and announce that we are entering the messianic era. Trias Amesim, the resurrection of the dead. And Olam Haba, the world to come. Okay, now, of those three elements, what is the order? He asks, what comes first? So here he says there's a difference of opinion. The Rambam writes that first Mashiach will come. And he adds, by the way, that the Rambam writes that the first stage of Mashiach coming is kibbutz Golios, the ability and the, the fact of Jews from all over the world coming back to Israel. And he writes, we are seeing this happen in our day. So it is not just poetic. We are witnessing the first component of the Messianic era. So the first thing that will happen is Mashiach will come, then Trias Amesim, dead who are deserving, I guess, are brought back to life. And after that will be Olam Haba. That is a purely spiritual life, meaning after the physical life, there is our souls will enjoy a spiritual existence separate from our bodies, and that is something that's in the future, and that's totally spiritual. That's according to the Rambam. There are those who hold that Triasa Mesim is the world to come. Okay, so there's a difference of it being exactly which is which and which comes first, which comes second. Now, the next question. Very practical question. If people who have died are going to come back to life, what are they going to look like? At what age will they appear? Zohar, in the Zohar, that's the classic work of Jewish mysticism of Kabbalah, Amr Ravacha, Ravacha says, when Trias Amesim occurs, Shu Yavo Bediak, a person will uh, reappear, will, will come back to life with exactly the same appearance as when they died. They will come back with the same neshama, their soul will be the same, and they will come back with the same body. <clears throat> However, he writes, this is not completely clear because there are some details that we still don't understand. Uh, what clothing will the person be wearing? So there are some details that are not clear. So the bottom line is, uh, we know with a certainty that Tchiasa Mason will happen. But when exactly will it happen and how it exactly will happen, about that the Rambam says, no one knows and no one will know until it happens. So then he asks an obvious question. <clears throat> Why do we not know? Why doesn't God simply tell us clearly what to expect? We're told to believe this. We're told it will happen. Why not give us the details? So the Rambam writes, it appears the reason is because God does not want us focused on future events. God wants us to focus on living our lives meaningfully now. What am I supposed to be doing now? What is my obligation now? How do I make myself a better person now? 
<clears throat> so we have to know that this will happen in the future. We say it in our prayers. We express it in our beliefs. But to dwell on the details of when and how and the logistics of it, that's not worthwhile to spend one's time considering. Rather, we should spend our time considering the details of how we're supposed to live our lives now. <clears throat> That's the substance of Rev. Ramon's answer in his letter. Again, he presents very clearly what we believe, what we do know, what we're not sure about, why we're not sure about it, what it's supposed to mean to us. Okay. Now, I left out parts of this letter and I'm going to go back and review it now. And here is where you see Rav Ramon's sterling character coming through. Because I want you to know the context. It starts off like this. Shalom Harav. Hello, Rabbi. Zot Michal Levenstern. My name is Michal Levenstern. She is 10 years old. I want to ask you a question, Rabbi, about Trias Amesim, the resurrection of the dead. Masai Abba Yachzor, when will my father come back? Her father, Elisha, Elisha Levenstern, fell in battle in Gaza. So his 10 year old daughter writes a letter to Rabbi Ramon. When will he come back? And she wants to know, Is he going to look the same as the last time that I saw him? Or will he look differently? Those are the questions that this 10-year-old girl in Israel posed to Rabbi Ramon. Listen, please, to the beginning of his answer. Shalom, Michal. Thank you for writing. The first thing you should know is that your father is a tzaddik. He was a righteous man. He was a good man who did much good in the world. He helped other people. He studied Torah. Many people remember the photo of him. There was a photo that he was studying Torah. He was actually studying the Rambam, a work of Maimonides, just before he went into the battle in Gaza where he lost his life. Your father very much loved his family, your mother, and all of the children. Rabbi Ramon writes, that just writing this response to this little girl brought tears to his eyes. Imagine the Jewish people, what we're going through, and also the strength of the faith of a 10-year-old girl. I believe it. Explain to me how it's going to happen. I, I, I quoted a line from his letter that the Zohar says that the person will come back with the appearance at the moment that they died. So he adds a line. We don't exactly know the details, which garments he's wearing, exactly how that works. Presumably, this is my understanding, that he wanted to make sure that his daughter did not think he would come back appearing wounded. Presumably, if he was killed in battle, his last moments, he was injured, presumably. So that she shouldn't think that she's waiting for her father to come back with a grave injury, uh, bloodied, perhaps, God forbid. So he says, you know, we don't exactly know all the details. What's a person going to look like? How are they dressed? I think it was, I think that's what he meant by adding that. I intentionally left out part of a paragraph that I read to you. 
The Rambam says that it's not worthwhile to be involved in trying to contemplate the exact details of what will happen and when it will happen. Rather, what God wants us to focus on is life. And he writes to her, you should think about your father. You should think about all the good things that your father gave to you and gave to the world. You should continue to follow your path, which is so beautiful. You should know that your father will come back to life. But you don't have to worry about the details. Focus on the journey of your life that you're on. You're studying Torah. You're growing up. You have these amazing role models. And then he adds the following. He writes that Jews have been killed throughout our entire history. However, most of those eras of history, they were killed when they were in a position of great lowness. Think about the pogroms, think about the Holocaust, think about all throughout European history and so many other periods. And it was during a time when the Jewish people was in a, were, were in a position of loneliness, in exile, scattered, dispersed, often not given rights, treated unfairly. But your father, whose name was Elisha, he did not die in Auschwitz or Bergen-Belsen. He died while he was wearing the garments of of a courageous soldier, like the garments of the Kohen, priestly garments, the garment of Malchus, of sovereignty, the garments of a king, the uniform of Tzva HaGanah Yisrael, of the Israel Defense Force. Your father died in a manner that he was fulfilling the mitzvah that we have not been able to fulfill in 2,000 years to fight in an army to protect Am Yisrael, the Jewish people, for 2,000 years. We never had an army. Your father died while he was protecting the Jewish people. It's very, very difficult for us that he is killed. It's very, very sad for us that he no longer is among us in his physical body. However, we know that he died as a valorous protector of the people of Israel. We know that his life and his death added more to the unfolding of our redemption. And then he added the following final comment. Her father's name, Michal's father's name was Elisha. Elisha was the name of a a prophet, a Navi. Elisha Hanavi, listen to this, it's just so brilliant. Kishmo Shelavicha, the, the prophet Elisha, your father has the same name as him. We know from, from Sefer Malachim, the book of Kings, that Elisha, he himself brought about bringing the dead back to life. There are several very famous episodes in Sefer Malachim. We read some of them as the Haftorah, where he brings someone dead back to life. Abu Shulcha, your father, who had the same name, Lo Mason, he did not bring the dead back to life, Avulhu Hichia Esachayim, but he brought life and energy to life. Hu Nasan Harbe Kochos Vaharbe Tikvos Lanoshim Chayim. 
He gave much strength and much hope to others. He himself was a man who was filled with life. And finally, he says to this little girl, Im yilach o tshelot, if you have any other questions, please, I would be happy to address them. Signed, Yosef Tzvi Rimo. The anguish and the beauty, the sadness and the faith expressed so sensitively by the one and only Rabbi Yosef Rimo. My friends, I wish you a good day and I look forward to seeing you soon in person.